This video marks the beginning of a series of videos that will deal with electronic circuits. Uh, but before we get into the electronic circuit theory, we first have to discuss a few conventions and some relevant circuit uh, concepts that we will use consistently throughout the entire uh, process of each one of these videos. Uh, these concepts are used mainly in terms of analysis. These are basic circuit analysis techniques that you would have learned in any introductory uh, electrical engineering course on circuit analysis. So, why don't we first talk about conventions? What conventions do we have? Seeing how electronic circuits are typically very complicated circuits uh, in, their, uh, in the way that they are actually put together in a schematic, uh, there are certain things that we do to simplify uh, such uh, circuits. And the main thing, the main difference between electric circuits and electronic circuits is that you'll notice if I draw a simple, let's say, a resistor, uh, two resistors, let's say, in series, and let's say this is ground, uh, typically we'll have this voltage as some, let's say, plus VCC. Now, what this actually represents in terms of electric circuits, or the circuits that you're used to seeing in uh, sort of traditional form, uh, is actually you'll have one resistor, you'll have this part stays the same, of course, but what this uh, voltage source at the top represents is actually a voltage source connected between that point and ground. So I can draw a voltage source here, VCC. Now, the reason we do it this way, as opposed to, um, this is the preferred approach, I should, I should mention, uh, as opposed to this method, uh, the main reason being that if I were to consider a whole bunch of different electronic components to draw a voltage source across the terminals like this, every time I have a voltage source appearing, uh, is a very uh, convoluted approach uh, to actually take when trying to draw these circuits. So, for example, if I may have, and in future circuits we will discuss, uh, let's say, transistor amplifiers. So if I were to have, let's say, some sort of transistor amplifier, where I would have first a biasing network, and of course all this is irrelevant to the topic to be discussed right now, However, it uh, just goes to show as an example of how complicated some of these circuits can get. Uh, so you might have, let's say, a two-stage amplifier. Uh, now the nature of the amplifier is obviously not important. But you notice that if I want to have, let's say I want to make this plus VCC, or let's not use VCC, let's use, let's say, plus 15 volts, I want to make this plus 10 volts, I want to make this plus 5 volts. If I do it in the traditional approach, this circuit all of a sudden becomes very uh, messy just to look at. Uh, and so let's, I mean, if I were to let's actually draw that, it'll look something like this. So I'll still have all these resistors, I'll still have my grounds, I'll still have this resistor here, I'll still have this biasing network and all this stuff here. Again, this is irrelevant to the actual, the theory of this circuit is actually irrelevant to the topic at hand. But now if you think about this, I need to draw one source here for this thing, so this will be, uh, let's say, plus 15 volts. Then I need another source here um, between these two points. Well, I forgot to draw the source there. So you need the actual source here, and this will be plus 10 volts. And then you see I need to do that again. And now if, if I have, let's say, two or three more stages, and all of a sudden I have four more biasing networks, or however many biasing networks I ever or biasing voltages here, I have these rails, uh, you notice that this thing gets very messy very fast. So one of the biggest changes between electric circuits and electronic circuits is this sort of approach that we take when we actually uh, just represent the voltage source as a bar and we write the voltage on top of it. And we know that this voltage is always with respect to ground. We treat these as, uh, they usually call them rails. Um, well, traditionally they're called rails. And so in the same case, I may have, let's say, let's get rid of this thing at the bottom, and I want to make this now, let's say, minus 15 volts. Now if I wanted this to be minus 15 volts, then I would, in this case, I could remove this ground here, and that would be minus 15 volts, and the top would be plus 15 volts with respect to ground. Uh, so I would have to actually have this thing with respect to ground first, and then I would have this resistor here, and then I would have to include another resistor, or uh, voltage source here, sorry, and I could do this, and I could say this is minus 15 volts. And so you see now all of a sudden I've added another layer of complexity, and this circuit is going to get really messy really fast. So that's in terms of the actual circuit schematics. Now what about um, quantities? So in electronic circuits, typically we have very small currents, and we have typically large resistances compared to those currents. So we deal with all voltages 
in terms of volts. We deal with currents in terms of milliamperes. And we deal with uh, resistances in terms of, well, if our voltages are in terms of uh, volts and our currents are in terms of milliamps, then we would expect this will be in terms of kilo ohms. So this is the sort of standard. So whenever you will see in any of the videos following this one, uh, if a resistor is drawn and in the event that I forget to or that it is not labeled with a kilo ohm or a milliampere current, um, which probably won't be the case in most uh, videos, uh, what, what you can assume safely is that all the resistances are in kilo ohms and all the currents are in milliamps, all the voltages are in volts, unless otherwise stated. You might have some cases where you have a really small current or a really small resistance or a really large resistance, in which case I'll make it clear uh, that I'm converting to ohms and then I am using whatever multiplication factor is appropriate. So now let's talk about some relevant concepts. And by relevant concepts, I'm not talking about any, um, any new theory that's related to electronics. But what I am talking about is circuit analysis techniques. Um, and these techniques will be voltage division, which is essentially a um, simplification, I guess you can say, of Ohm's law um, in the case of a series uh, circuit. You will have current division. This is less popular in electronics, the um, use of current division. So let's write less common because we won't probably use this one as much as we will voltage division um, just because things the way that things work out in electronics that's the way it usually is we will use the Thevenin equivalent uh, circuits quite a bit because it's uh, it's a good idea to be able to represent one part of a circuit in terms of a voltage source and a resistance uh, it'll make the, uh, the analysis of the rest of the circuit much easier because certain uh, parts of the circuit can be analyzed in a simple way while other ones are typically complicated. So if we can break down the circuit into a bunch of simpler circuits and we can actually analyze the thing at the end, it'll make our life a lot easier. So we have Thevenin equivalent circuits. Norton equivalent we won't use nearly as much, um, but the, the difference between Norton equivalent and Thevenin equivalent is... Um, I mean, you can find one with once you have knowledge of, of the other uh, due to the sort of relationship between voltage and current. So we'll have Norton equivalent circuits. And again, I'll write less common because this one we probably won't use as much. And then we have, this is a very important one, is superposition because we will have an electronics quite often where we have a DC bias network and we have an AC signal and we're trying to do something with the AC signal and this AC signal will depend on DC biasing and all this type of um, very, uh, you know, uh, layered sort of problems in that they have a DC component, an AC component, and the final result is dependent on both of them. So these are the five, really five, well, let's say three. The three main topics uh, in, in, well, the three ones that we'll use the most will have to be voltage division, uh, Thevenin equivalent circuits, and superposition. Now, in the following videos, we will cover each one of these concepts uh, with relatively basic examples, um, but not, not to the point that they are trivial. Uh, we will talk about basic examples in the, in the form that you will see them most often in the preceding, uh, or sorry, I should say the following uh, videos that will come. Uh, a little bit later on all these topics. So uh, this is a sort of summary of the videos to come and over the next little while we will ha have videos uh, for these topics and I hope you find them useful. If you haven't already hit that like subscribe button and so that we can notify you as soon as the new video is uploaded and you will be able to reap the maximum benefit. We'll see you in the next one.